all blood is not red. Though human beings have blood which is red in color, we have so many other living beings where the blood color is totally different and varied. You have the spiders, squids and the crustaceans and octopuses which have got blood which is blue in color. Some of the marine worms which has got blood which is deep purple in color. Butterflies and the cockroaches which has blood which is colorless. This session I'll be taking you all through a ride through our red colored blood. So we have the blood composition and function here. So we'll go step by step. We have blood here and the objective of today's session would be I would be discussing the composition of blood where we'll discuss how much of water, how much of plasma, how much of plasma proteins, how much of electrolyte, nutrients, what is exactly that makes up your blood. Then we'll discuss about the blood volume. Maintaining the right blood volume is so important for the effective functioning of your cardiovascular system and literally all the organ systems of your body where the variations in blood volume also would be discussed and the reasons also would be figured out. And finally, the third objective we would be discussing would be the variations which can happen and also the most important we will come to the functions of blood. The most important highlighted eight functions of blood also will be discussed in the coming up slides. Now let's come to the definition of blood. So normally we have a tendency to define blood as a fluid or a liquid which fills your heart and vessels. That's a normal definition which an undergraduate medical student normally gives. But actually you go by the definition, blood is a connective tissue. How do you put it? It's a liquid connective tissue that fills the heart and the blood vessels. And look at the normal volume of blood which is present in an adult human being. It's around five to six liters. Now we have got variations in that which I'll be discussing. So you look at a slide here. Now this is a test tube where you have blood which is with anticoagulant. And then this is exactly what you see. You have the plasma component of the blood and then you have the solid component of the blood. The plasma component makes up to 55% and the solid component makes up to 45%. Now you look at the 55% plasma component, you have the water, it's a major component of plasma. 92% of the plasma is made up of water. Then you have the proteins, you have all the plasma proteins coming up there. You have the albumins, globulins, fibrinogen, prothrombin, few more other proteins. You have the nutrients which are absorbed from the intestine. You have different salts, sodium, potassium, calcium, copper. You have different metabolites which are picked up by the blood as a result of cellular metabolism. Then you have different enzymes and hormones. So all this is contained in the plasma 55%. Then you have the solid comp component which makes up 45% of your blood which includes the different cellular component of the blood, which we call as the erythrocytes. Then you have the white blood cells, which are the leukocytes, which takes care of the immunity. And then you have the platelets or the thrombocytes, which takes care of the clotting mechanism of the body. Now going to the detail about the blood, you can see that blood volume is calculated as 70 to 80 ml per kilogram body weight. That one single sentence leads to you to an understanding that blood volume is related to the surface area. More the size, more the blood volume. Now look at the normal blood volume in a male and a female. That again takes you further to that first clue. Male has a blood volume of 5 to 6 liters and females have got a blood volume of 4.5 to 5 liters. So here what happens is, you can see that the blood volume in females is lesser than the blood volume in males. The reason is in males the oxygen demand is more because the muscle mass in male is more. So when the oxygen demand is more, muscle mass is more, what is happening in the body is the male blood vessels have got a larger diameter than the females. So what happens is the blood volume which is very much related to the surface area of the body 
bigger the person, bigger the surface area, more is the blood volume. And you can see that in males it is 5 to 6 liters and in females it is 4.5 to 5.5 liters. Now coming to the functions. So you can see in the session that the blood functions have been discussed under 8 headings. But please keep in mind, they, the functions have been numbered not according to the importance. It doesn't mean that when the first function is respiratory function and the second is transport medium and the third or the fourth is immunity, it doesn't mean that the most important function is respiratory function, next important function is transport medium, no. All the eight functions listed down here are all equally important. So, coming to the first function, we have the respiratory function. Very simple, it transports oxygen from the lungs to the tissues and carbon dioxide from the tissues to the lungs. So what happens is for cellular metabolism to happen, oxygen is a very key essential ingredient. So when we inspire air into the lungs, oxygen is picked up by the hemoglobin in the blood. It will be delivered to each and every cells in your body and the oxygen is delivered at the tissue level cells utilize it for its metabolic processes and the end product of cellular metabolism we have all kinds of uh, what you consider as a waste materials along with that carbon dioxide also is released by a cell after its metabolism. Now this carbon dioxide along with the waste material will be picked up by the blood but at this point I am just sticking on to only the component of carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide picked up from the tissues again by the hemoglobin because the hemoglobin once it delivers the oxygen to the cells it picks up carbon dioxide and it goes back to the lungs and at the lungs the carbon dioxide is released by the hemoglobin and it is expelled out of your body through the process of expiration. Now coming to the next point you have the transport medium. Transport medium looking at a big view it is a transport medium for chemical substances, nutrients, vitamins and hormones. So what happens here is your endocrine glands for example if you take, they release their hormones and the hormones released by the endocrine glands are poured into your blood. And it's this blood which takes these hormones all over your body all through the circulation and it will be delivered to the target tissue where the particular hormone released by the endocrine gland needs to act. And you know that wherever the target organ these hormones need to go and act, they would have receptors on them. So these hormones would go and bind there and bring about the further action. So it's very important here the hormones released by the endocrine glands, how blood forms a transport medium. Either the hormones are transported free or the hormones are transported in combination with different carrier proteins, it could be the plasma proteins, there are so many ways. Then you have the vitamins and the nutrients. So whatever food intake, food you take, digestion happens and from the stomach, from the intestine, all the nutrients and the vitamins get into your circulation and it's the blood which carries it and delivers it to the cells and the tissues where they are really essential for the cellular metabolism. Then you have different chemical substances. It could be neurotransmitters, so many chemical substances released by different organ systems in your body. Again, is poured into the blood because blood is someone, it's a liquid connective tissue which is reaching each and every corner of your body and the aim is transport medium. It needs to transport all these substances to the cell because only then an effective cellular metabolism is going to happen. So it's been stated as the last two points, blood circulates and distributes to all the tissues of the body and then it regulates the nutrition, growth and metabolism of the tissues. Naturally, isn't it? When all the required contents for cellular metabolism is being delivered by the blood to the cells and the tissues, we come zero down to the last point. It takes care of the body's nutrition, growth and metabolism. Now the third point, we have the temperature regulation. Now a normal body temperature is regulated by the blood. So what exactly happens here is, see when cellular metabolism, the basal metabolic activity is happening in your body, naturally heat is generated. And this heat from the interior of the body needs to reach the surface of the body and it's from the surface, the either the heat is going to be dissipated or it needs to be retained by the body. 
So now what is that way or how, how is the heat which is generated from the interior of the body is getting on to the surface of your body. That function is done by the blood. Have a look at the first point. The blood conducts heat from the interior of the body to the surface through the blood vessels. So the heat generated by cellular metabolism in the interior of the body first gets delivered to the blood vessels and it's these blood vessels which take it to the surface of your body. And then what happens? The two points tells you either if the body wants to retain that heat, then what needs to happen is vasoconstriction of the blood vessels should happen. Moment the blood vessels are vasoconstricted, then the body is trying to retain or preserve the heat which is generated from the interior of the body. But if body wants to lose the heat to the external environment, if body requires or body aims at dissipation of heat, then the blood vessels are going to go for a vasodilation. So that's how body or the blood controls or regulates the temperature in the body. Now coming to the fourth point, you have the excretory function. Now this excretory function slightly overlaps, you know, the first point what we discussed, the transport medium. So here what happens is blood transports the waste materials from different parts of the body to the kidney. So whenever cellular metabolism is happening in the body, utilizing the oxygen which is delivered by the hemoglobin in the blood, carbon dioxide is released. Along with that, there is a lot of waste materials which is again poured back into the blood. And now what does blood do? Blood takes this waste materials, 